God says, I'm going to have to bless some people. Where God is taking us, he's going to have to bless some folks. Hallelujah. I, somebody holler, that's me, that's me. Woohoo! Yeah, Lord. I got it. Yeah, he's going to have to bless me. I felt that in the Holy Ghost. See? I said, if you want to bless anybody, bless me. You can trust me with increase. To celebrating after we get the increase can you put a premeditated praise right there increase is not there oh, oh. Yeah. it's not here yet but I'm gonna put a praise on it I, I said I'm gonna put a praise on it For what's coming. Come on, invite your seed. Come on. Invite your seed. Oh. Yeah. You don't have to wait till the bottom is over. You can shout right there. Oh, be shy. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 And dance this Frisco ho make yourself that ho ho <laughs> hey! he's going to turn your morning into dancing come on ho Come on, before we take it, can you just testify to three people? Say, increase is coming. Increase is coming. Increase. Go ahead and celebrate. <laughs> Enlarge my territory. Enlarge. 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 
and we thank you for this seed we're about to put in the ground. We've prophesied over this seed. We've spoken to this seed. And we thank you for increase. Thank you for enlarging our territory. Thank you for expanding. We don't see it, but we sowing in the blind for what you're going to do. <laughs> and for this we thank you. Oh, my, 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 my. And for this we oh, oh, oh. For this we give you praise. And for this we give you praise. Just release something. I'm trying to move. It's in here. Side of your seed all week long. All week long.
your seed. Come on. Dance for it. Go. Leap for it. Run for it. Whatever you need to do, you better get it right here. Life over your seed. Woo. Your seed gonna live and not die. I feel it. I said your seed gonna live and not die. Come forth in Jesus' name. Come forth in Jesus' name.
hearing what you said, I feel like some of us didn't hear you, but I heard you clearly. You said God is getting ready to bless this house. And what you've got to understand, people of God, is that whatever God do for this house, he going to do for your house. Clap your hands and give him praise. 
Go with me to 2 Kings chapter number 4. 2 Kings chapter number 4, just two verses there. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Bishop, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity, sir, to come and to serve your house. It's a privilege and it's an honor for me to be here. I don't consider this a light assignment. Honey, this is a major assignment for me. This is a major house, so you don't even know who you sit next to. You in a major house. Somebody say, this is a major house. <laughs> Tell somebody, say, did you hear what I said? This is a major house. And so I'm so very thankful to be here in a major house on a major assignment for a major God. Amen. To celebrate a major woman. Y'all not saying nothing right now. First lady major. I don't got nothing. Don't be tired of clapping. I said first lady major. Oh, yes, she is. She's beautiful. We celebrate you today. Your life is impacting so many, even myself. I was laughing. I know I got an amen corner somewhere. I was laughing. Think about first lady. Sometimes I find myself mindlessly scrolling on Facebook. In one hand, I got my cell phone. In the other hand, I got my chocolate donut. And I'm just scrolling and eating. And I say, oh, Jesus. Look, look, ish. Lord, let me put this donut down. Let me go to the jail. Child first lady putting us all to shame. Y'all not saying nothing. Hallelujah. I love a woman to keep other women in power. Y'all not saying nothing. I love a woman to make other women want to get they self together. Y'all not saying nothing. I love a woman to make other women say, let me hold up, hold up, hold up now. Hold up. That's your first lady. She's influential. She's making a difference. Clap your hands for your first lady this morning. Let's clap our hands for this amazing band. Where my minister at? He in the back. I can't see. Minister, I love you. Second Kings chapter four. Two verses here. I'm going to get out of your way. I'm going to read out of the King James Version. Saying praise the Lord to all of you that are watching online this morning. Those of you that are on Facebook or wherever you're watching. We're saying praise the Lord. To all of the elders and pastors and evangelists, to all of the saints and friends, we greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 25 says, So she went and came unto the men of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the men of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well spirit of the living god we thank you for this opportunity to speak on your behalf i ask that you would speak through me i pray that you would open up our hearts our spirits and our ears that we may hear and receive you i pray that you would hide this word in our hearts hide it in a place where the enemy cannot snatch it away most of all, Father, I pray that you would give us the capacity to walk this word out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, it is well. I want to talk to you this morning for the next few moments from the subject, 
An honest answer. An honest, an honest answer. Elijah is the major prophet at this time, and he is the mentee of his predecessor, Elijah. He travels to this town named Shunem, and he goes there quite often, but uh, the prophet Elijah, beloved, he, he doesn't just go as a prophet, but we learned in our study that Elijah also, Bishop, was, was not only a prophetic voice and a major prophet, but he was also a civic leader. Uh, he also serves in this particular town sometimes, not only as a prophet, but he serves as a judge. In this particular city, there is a woman who the Bible describes, beloved. The Bible describes her, watch this in one translation. The Bible describes her as a rich and influential woman. She's nameless. I like that because whenever someone's nameless, we can put our names there. You can prophesy over yourself right now if you like to and say, I am rich and I am influential. She is the only woman in the Bible who is described as both rich and influential. And so basically what this means, beloved, is that she's got her own stuff. In the time where uh, women only had what their husbands chose for them to have or what they wanted them to have, this girl must had a lot of stuff because the Bible says that she was rich and she was in influential she had her own stuff I was thinking uh, Bishop when I first got married uh, one of the mothers came to me and and said baby I know uh, you're married now but always keep your little something on the side just in case one day he get crazy and put you off on the side of the street you you got your own money you got yourself some money to get home keep you some self some money together she had I didn't hear nobody right there. <laughs> but here it is, beloved. I'll get out of that. Not only is she rich and influential, but she's an honorable woman. Somebody says she's honorable. She's an honorable moment, woman. No doubt she is rich and influential, I believe, because she's honorable. She gives and shows the prophet honor. And as a matter of fact, she gives Elijah what I would like to consider the highest praise a man can receive. I'll tell you what that is. She sees him for who he really is. Yeah, she, she recognizes who he is. Not just as a man, but as a man of God. She, 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 she recognizes that there's something special about this man. The Bible says that she says to her husband, I perceive that this is a holy man. And so she recognizes him. She saw him for who he was. The challenge with a lot of women is, is that, is that we, we name and claim and identify men by their mistakes and by their past. But what re men really need is for you to really see them for the man that God called them to be. I need y'all to come on here and say amen. So the Shunammite woman recognized that Elijah was a man of God. And here it is, beloved. It wasn't enough for her to just recognize it. But she wanted to do something to show her honor. Honor, beloved, is not known just by what you say. I don't know that you honor me just by what you say. But I know that you honor me by what you do. I know that you honor me by how you handle me. You can't mishandle me and say that you honor me, y'all. Not saying nothing. You can't say that you honor me. You can't say that you love me, but mishandle me. I know that you love me by how you handle me. So I'm not going off of what you say. Y'all not hearing me. Because you can, I love me all day long. I, I, I'm too grown to go off. I love you. I, 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 I want to know. Here it is, first lady. I want to know if your actions.
actions are matching your words. And if they're not, you're, you're, you're just a tinkling cymbal. The sound and brass. She tells her husband that she wants to build. Here it is, y'all. This girl has got some money. The Bible says that she wants to build him a private entrance to their home where the prophet and his armor bearer, Gehazi, could stay and come to town. The Bible says that because, here it is, first lady, because of her honor. Y'all got to catch this. And because of her kindness, the Bible says that the man of God, Elijah, asked her, what can I do for you? Here it is. Many of you are missing it. You don't even realize that some of the blessings that's hitting your house is not just because you've been so good, but because you know how to honor your man and your woman of God. Uh -huh. you, 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 get, you got to understand. You got you can quit letting people get in your ear talking about uh, you still going to that church. Uh, you still giving your money to that church. Uh, you still showing up at that church. Yes, I am. Uh, because being faithful to this house uh, is bringing a blessing to to my house and the honor that I have for my man and woman of God is bringing God favor to my life so yeah I'm still blessing him yeah I'm still blessing her y'all not saying why are you giving all your money to that church you don't understand what's going on in my life God is blessing me because I'm blessing them I kind of want to stay there, but I, let me get out of that. I'm, 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 a, I'm a guest today, so I'm going to mind my own. I'm going to mind my own business. She says, the man of God, the man of God says, what can I do for you? I'm moving along in my text. I got my timer going. Don't worry. He said, he said, he said, well, I want to do something for you. I want to I wanna be a blessing. I want to be a blessing to you. Here it is, y'all. She said, she said, listen, I'm good. Matter of fact, this ain't even in my notes, but in my mind, Bishop, I feel like she's saying, I don't need another prophecy. Doc, I'm good. I'm looking for the people this morning that say, I don't need another prophecy. As a matter of fact, I don't want another prophecy. As a matter of fact, I'm waiting on the prophecy to come to pass that God said to me 15 years ago. I just need God to do something in my life that he already said. So don't ask me what I need him to do today. I need him to make good on what he already said. She says, I'm good. She said, she said, she said a minute ago, she said, I'm good. Y'all read the scripture when you go back home. I love this text. That's why I only wrote two verses. Read only two verses. I want y'all to go back and read it. She, she says, I'm good. She said, she says, I dwell amongst my own people. I have my own stuff. I don't need nothing. Sis said, I'm good. But here it is, beloved. Here's the point of the text this morning. Here's the point of our sermon this morning. It was a lie. It wasn't an honest answer. Yeah. Uh, uh, here, 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 here it is for somebody in the back. It was a protective answer, but it wasn't an honest answer. What, what, do, what do I mean by that? I mean by that is that many of us are good, Bishop, at giving answers that will protect us. You're good, sis. You're good. You're good at giving answers that will protect your heart. Can I come down your row? Can I come down your row? You want to be married? No, girl, I'm good. I don't want to be married. You is lying. I'm going to tell you, I got a couple of degrees, so I know how to speak proper English, but it feel better when you say you is lying. Uh -huh. I, 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 I don't want to be married I, I don't want to be married I don't want to be married again that's the protective answer because the last time you tried it it broke your heart the, the last time you tried it you was laying on somebody's couch the last time y'all not saying nothing huh? the last time you tried it huh? you loved the wrong person you gave your heart your body your mind your soul to the wrong person and so now the man of God is saying what do you want and your answer is the protective answer Answer. I'm good. It wasn't an honest an 
honest answer. Somebody offends you. Somebody do you wrong. And you say, don't worry about it. I'm good. You lying. It hurts your feelings. Y'all not saying nothing. Huh? We got to grow. Can I just come out my notes real quick? We got to grow up in God and, and be mature enough to start using our words and, and learn how to have conversations huh, with one another without cussing each other out. But be, being honest and saying, you know, huh, what you said really hurt my feelings. Huh? Maybe it should not hurt me and, and maybe I shouldn't feel the way I do. Huh? But I'm not going to lie about it. Huh? I got to be honest. Huh? What you did hurt me. Somebody say grow up and give an honest answer. So here it is, y'all. Gehazi, Gehazi knows, Gehazi knows that she doesn't have a son. Now you got to understand, let me take my time, catch my breath first lady, I'll be in the gym tomorrow. <laughs> Gehazi knows she doesn't have a son. But here it is, y'all. The stigma associated with not having a child was painful during this particular time. Remember, they're looking for the Messiah. You hear me? And so, and so, and so it, it, it meant something if the Lord had, had shut up, shut up a woman's womb. Uh, but, but, but here it is. She, she said she didn't have, she said she didn't want a son. Now, when I thought about it, I said, now, why would she say that? When you, when, when you, when you read a text, beloved, you got to start asking questions. You have to ask questions when you read a text. And I, I started saying, I said, well, maybe... Maybe she said she didn't want a son because maybe she had already lost a child before. Maybe she had a miscarriage before. Her husband is up in age. And so, and so because her husband is up in age, uh, uh, maybe she's looking at him and maybe she's thinking there's no need for me to get my hopes up high because what God is saying he's going to do for me is impossible. Maybe she says I'm good because this promise sounds uh, too good to be true. Can I just walk down your road this morning and tell to you uh, that it's hard to believe God for a promise uh, when everything that you see uh, is it's contrary to what God says. It's hard to believe that God is going to heal you when your body is full of cancer. It's hard to believe that God is going to save your son, save your daughter when they are strung out on drugs. It's hard to believe that God is going to make you a millionaire and your bank account is overdrawn. It's hard to believe. What he says when everything that you see is opposite of what he says. But I come to encourage somebody. I need you to lay your hands on your neighbor and say, but believe again. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but, but God sent me here to encourage somebody to tell you to believe again. The prophet prophesies over her life don't worry I'm going here almost done the prophet prophesies over her life he says I know you don't want to believe it but here it is y'all the word of the Lord is sure though it tarry wait on it huh? I come to encourage somebody huh, that's been waiting on a word for a long time huh? I come to encourage somebody huh, that's been believing God you still believe in God huh? yes I'm believing God huh? because though he slay me huh, yet will I'm believing with tears I'm still believing huh? I'm believing in pain I'm, I'm still believing huh? I'm, I'm believing with my, with my money not right huh? I'm still believing huh? friends have left me I'm still believing huh? people who promised me platforms who didn't make good on their way huh? but I'm still believing still believing I'm, I'm still believing he says I know you don't want to believe me 
but by by her behind you by this time next year. I said by this time next year. I need some prophetic people that say by this time next year, everything in my life gonna look different. Prophesy over yourself. By this time next year, y'all ain't gonna recognize me. And if you think I'm I'm acting brand new, it's because I am. Because he's making all things new. She acting different because I am. She acting new because I am. Y'all not saying nothing. Y'all not. Here, here it is. You think I went through all that I went through to stay the same? You think I went through all the hell that I went through to be the same person? You think I almost lost my mind to stay where I was? The devil is alive. But this time next year. So the Bible says, y'all, the Bible says, sure enough, somebody say, sure enough, sure enough, the word of the Lord came to pass, her and her husband conceived, let me try to hurry this along, her and her husband conceived, she, she gives birth to a son, so of course, first lady, she love that baby, it's her, watch this, it's her miracle promise. Oh, God, I don't want to get in there. She, she loves this baby. And, 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 and because he is her promised child, uh, God had made her a promise. Here it is. And he made good on the promise, but, somebody say but. But when the boy becomes, y'all, about seven or eight years old, trouble hits the house. It's almost one of those is too good to be true story. But how many... How many of you know that, that it, it just comes with the territory? Huh? Oh, what the words say, y'all. Think it not strange. Come on. Concerning these fiery trials that come to try you as though some strange. Come on, y'all know the words. As though some strange thing has happened to you. When he gets about seven or eight years old, beloved, the Bible says that he's out there with the field in the field with his dad. And it's a, he, he really has a heat stroke. He's so hot. The Bible says, the boy starts screaming, my head, my head. They out in the field. He starts screaming, my head, my head. I said, God, what was so significant about the head? Remember, I told you, you got to ask questions now. I said, God, what was so significant? Because it could have been a heart. It could have been anything. God said this. This is what he's saying to me in my own personal study. The reason why the enemy attacks your head is because whoever has the head has the victory. That's why the enemy fights your mind the way he fights your mind. Because if he can get your mind, he can get your belief. Y'all not saying nothing. That's why you're wavering in your mind. That's why you got to lay your hands on your mind and say, I will not be double-minded. My mind belongs to God. God didn't give me the spirit of fear, but he gave me love, power, and a sound mind. He's after his head. But here it is, first lady. This is crazy. This is crazy. Y'all listening to me? I know y'all listening because I'm screaming. The boy collapses. They take him to his father. His father says, take him to his mother. Oh, I wish Bishop was here to hear this point. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I said, God, why would the daddy, why would the daddy tell the servants to take the boy to the mama because he wasn't the son was not the daddy's promise 
the son was the mama's promise so he didn't have the same destined interest in the boy y'all looking at me like i'm crazy you wondering why people can't celebrate you they not celebrating you because it's not their promise you wondering why people don't have a vested interest in you because god didn't make them the promise he made you the promise So people, people, he, he didn't have the same level of concern. Y'all not saying nothing for the boy that the mama did. Hallelujah. Because the promise wasn't made to him. And so here, here it, uh, here it is. Uh, the Bible says that they take the boy to the mama. They put the baby on the mama's knees and the boy dies. Her promise, y'all. Her promise dies in her arms. What do you do when the thing that God promised you dies in your arms? What do you do when the thing that you've been fasting for and praying for and believing God for seems like it came to life, but it was only temporary Sunday. It was only a temporary blessing. What do you do? <laughs> She, this woman, I like her. She knew right what, what to do. The Bible says, she says to her servants, saddle me the fastest horses we have. I got somewhere to go. Y'all. Y'all not, y'all not, y'all not hear me. The scripture never says that she cried. The, the scripture never says at this point uh, that she was grieved. I, I can imagine in her mind, y'all. Uh, I can imagine in your mind uh, that, 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 that if, if it was in today's vernacular, uh, I can imagine in her mind saying, I know you lying. God, I know you lying. I know you didn't just give me something that I ain't asked for. And then you're going to take it from me, y'all, y'all. I know, somebody said, I know you lying. She said, she said, I know you lying. I know you didn't take my promise away from me. But she said, watch this, y'all. She says, I'm not going to sit here and cry. I'm going to get up and go to the one who made me the promise. Here it is. We're almost done. I'm doing good on my time. Elijah's in the valley of Jezreel. As the Shunammite woman is approaching them. The Bible says Gehazi sees her first. And when Gehazi sees her first, Elijah commands Gehazi and says to Gehazi, go to her before she gets to me and ask her these three questions. Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? Is it well with you? And she gives this reply, beloved. It is well. But it wasn't well. I need y'all to come on and follow me. It wasn't well. It seemed on the surface that she did not give an honest answer because here it is. And I need some women to just back me up this morning. I know this is not Women's Day, but this is First Lady's Appreciation Day. So if I could just encourage the women real quick. The truth of the matter is that a woman's heart is filled with secret. A woman's heart is filled with secret pains and disappointments that we would rather keep to ourselves. I need somebody to back me up here there are some things that will happen and that are happening in our lives right now that we don't want people to know about and as a matter of fact they'll never even know about it they'll never know the pain that we are suffering because God has given women the ability to manage ourselves in such a way that on the surface you see peace and a beat face but on the inside there's a storm brewing we understand as women that there is a strength that people expect us to have that isn't expected from other people am I talking right 
We understand that there, we understand that there is a strength that people expect us to have uh, that isn't expected of other people. Uh, but here it is, First Lady. Uh, we've learned how to live uh, up to the expectations of others, uh, even when it is painful to ourselves. So we say we okay when we're not okay. We say we all right when we not all right. And, and, and I, 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 believe, I believe this. I thought about it. I thought about it, saints. I said, I said probably another reason I believe that, that, that she give Gehazi this answer, watch this, is because Gehazi wasn't the one who made her the promise. So he didn't have the power to fix her situation. See, the problem is many of us are talking to people that don't have no wisdom. They don't have the authority. They don't have the understanding standing they don't have why am i talking to you about your my problems and you can't even fix the problems in your own life i got to go to the one who made me the promise you got a you got a blended family and you talking you getting advice to a woman who ain't married i'm coming down your road y'all not Y'all not saying nothing. You, 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 you dating a bishop in the Lord's church. I feel like this is a women's conference, but it's not. I'm sorry. You, you, you dating in the bishop in the Lord's church, but then you talking to the girl. She over there dating Smitty. Smitty ain't, he ain't on the same level. You got to know who to talk to. She says, I'm not going to talk to you because you can't help me. I got to get back to the one who got the answer. I got to get back to the one who has the power. I got to get back to the one who can change my situation. Get me to the prophet. My last point and I'm done. I'm glad we, I'm glad we shouted before I got up. Here it is, y'all. Here it is. The man of God, first lady, the man of God recognizes that something is off. And that something is wrong with her. And so he said, he said, I see that she is vexed. Catch this, y'all. She said, I see. He said, I see that, this, that she is vexed. I looked it up. I did a quick search. That word vexed means bitter. In other words, he could see the bitterness on her face. She didn't have to say nothing, but I can believe that, that, oh, the look on her face said, didn't I tell you don't play with me? Didn't I, didn't I tell you that I didn't want this? Uh, y'all not saying that? Didn't I tell you uh, that I was all right? Uh, you was the one uh, who said God was going to give this to me. Uh, didn't I tell you to, not to play with me? And now the very thing that God gave me has died in my lap. Yeah, I'm bitter. Because when you called me, you told me I was going to the nations, but I still ain't been out my neighborhood. Let me come down your row. Huh? When you, you told me that I was going to be a millionaire, but, but money still not flowing. You told me huh, that I would be married by now, huh? but I'm raising these children huh, by myself. Why am I still here? I'm looking for some honest people this morning. I'm looking, I'm looking for some honest people this morning. Here it is, y'all. She's facing the prophet. I'm going to say this without screaming. She's facing the prophet. She's grieving and praying because her pride and her joy has died. She's suffering, y'all. But here it is. She really doesn't know how to deal with her suffering. So instead of giving an honest answer, y'all not saying nothing. And, and instead of giving an honest answer, she gives the answer that was expected of her. In other words, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> Can I be honest? Uh, I'm going to tell you what you want to hear because cause it's better for me to tell you what you, what you want to hear. It's better for me to give you the church answer because if I give you the truth, you, you really can't handle my honest answer. I'm looking for my real people right now. Huh? You, you really can't handle huh, what I really want to say. You, you really can't handle huh, how I'm really feeling about God. You, you really can't handle huh, how I'm really feeling about this Christianity thing. Huh? You really can't handle huh, how I feel about this church thing. You really can't handle handle my honest answer so let me give you what you want to hear 
See, if I give you, if I give you, ha, uh, uh, if I give you my honest answer, then you might not think I'm saved. I'm, I'm looking for the real people right now. I'm, I'm looking for the real people. I'm, uh, you, you, you may not think I'm saved. You, you may not think I got the Holy Ghost. If, if I tell you how I really feel, but, but here it is, y'all. Here's the point of the message. Uh, is that she, here, here it is. Had she really been honest, she would have given the prophet an answer that would really let the prophet and everybody else know, Bishop, she was really mad with God. <laughs> the text says, how do I know that? Because the text says that she said, why would you give me this blessing and then take it away from me? She was, she was mad at God. Beloved, I want to be honest with you tell, this morning and tell you this. God is not offended when you question him. He, he's not offended when you get upset when things don't go as planned. Uh, I want you to know today, beloved, that, 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 that you can be brutally honest with God. It's okay to say this is not what I signed up for. I'm looking for my real people. I'm, a, I'm, look, I'm look, you, you say, I just wanted to be a member. I, I didn't want to do all of this. I don't nobody want to say amen. See, y'all don't want to be honest. Everybody in this church is looking at you right now. I just want you to know that. <laughs> they are like, amen. <laughs> I, 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 the, the, the honest answer is that, is that, is that, is that I'm, 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 I'm mad with God. But, but, but this, is what, this is what I understand. I, I, I have to be honest with God. When he took my mother first lady, here I am. I got a big old bottle of oil and I'm anointing my mother's entire body because I was believing that God was going to raise her up and he took her anyway. Y'all not saying nothing in here. And I was mad with God because my mother loved God with her whole heart and on her death bed she was still praying for other people and I said God why did you have to take my mother it was an honest answer we get upset but God, it's okay because you said, you said, Pastor Ziza, there's some, I, I, I really thought I would be somewhere else in my life by now. I'm looking for some real people. I'm looking for some real people that said, by now, I thought I would be further along than this. I'm, I'm looking for some real people that said, I, I want to be honest. I, I thought my life was going to take a different path. But God said, y'all, take your seats. He said, even in my anger, Bishop, I learned that the scripture is true. His grace. Y'all not saying nothing. His grace is sufficient because even in my disappointment, when I got his grace, I, I can still give him glory. Even with my questions, I, I can still give him praise. Even with my doubt, I can still bless his name. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, we don't follow God because we understand him. We follow God because we trust him. We don't believe because we understand. We try to understand because we believe. Somebody say, I believe God. I know I said this is my close, my last point. Take your seats. This is my close. God wants an honest answer from us today. Here's the question Is it well with you? Beloved, I'm not asking, is it well with your career? I'm not asking, is it well with your money? I'm not asking, is it well with your marriage? I'm, I'm not asking, is, is, it, is it well on your job? I'm, I'm not asking, is it well? I'm not, I'm not asking about your wardrobe. I'm, I'm not asking about your shoes. I'm, I'm not asking about your purses. I'm asking you this morning, is it well I'm not, with you? I'm, I'm not asking about your house. I'm not asking about your four okay. How are things with you that really count? 
That, that, that's, that's what the question of the message is this morning. Is it well with your soul? Because you can have all of these things, but it not be well with your soul. Songwriter says, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is It may not always be well with your marriage. It may not always be well with your health. It may not always be well with your finances. It may not always be well with your children. It may not always be well with your family. Uh, but is it well with your soul? You may not understand the way God is taking you. But trust him and let your testimony remain the same that it is. At the core of this question for the message today, what I'm asking y'all, what I'm asking you, is it well with you? What I'm really asking you is, are you saved? Because if you're not saved, <laughs> Bishop, you know, let me just do a sidebar. You know, I had my pastoral installation a couple months ago. And I know God's called me to pastor. But my office is an evangelist. The most important thing to me is souls. I'm here this morning, not as a pastor, but I'm here as an evangelist. I got to make sure that your soul is saved. Because here it is, y'all. It doesn't matter how much you have. It doesn't matter how much money is in your bank account. It doesn't matter how many people like you. It doesn't matter how many followers you have. It doesn't matter. None of these things matter. If you are not saved, what does it profit you to gain this whole world and lose your soul? Pastor Morrison, I'm saved. I'm glad you're saved. Here's my question to those of you that are saved. How are you maturing as a Christian? Have you begun discipling other people the way somebody discipled you? Or are you just... Are you, are you going to the... Are you going back and say, baby, that's not... That's not... That's not... Well, we're not doing that. We, we're leaving that in the world. Listen, this is what I believe, Bishop. I believe people can come to church any way they want to. And they can stay any way they want to. But after a while, the Holy Ghost starts cleaning them up. And we got to disciple men and women for Christ. Here it is. I want to know, can you give God an honest answer this morning? You may be weathering a quiet storm and a personal pain like this Shunammite woman. Why give me something, God, only to take it back from me? You may not have a spouse this morning. I understand that. But is it well with your children? Have you made a decision that you want to be the best mother and the best father that you can be in that home? Watch this. You not they friend. Huh? You not they friend. We raising some of the weakest kids ever. My son told me the other day, I need to stay home for a mental health day. Get up out of this house and go to school. See, then none because y'all, see, that's where we come from. Mama say, get up out of that bed. We can talk about it later. Y'all not saying nothing. We can't be their friends. I'm your mother. I'm your father. You may not have a spouse this morning. Is it well with your children? And if you don't have children, it's okay because, because here it is, y'all. Having a child doesn't make you a woman. Having a child doesn't make you a man. Come on, let's just be honest. We know there's plenty of men and women who should have never had no babies. I can't, I can't, I can't hear nobody. I can't hear nobody. Last thing she said, is it well with your husband? And, and she said it was well, but it wasn't an honest answer, Bishop. 
It wasn't an honest answer. You know why? Go back and read the text, y'all. Because remember I said he sent the boy to his mother. Why? Because he was busy. He was busy working. He was too busy. Y'all not saying nothing. To attend to his own child. Watch this, y'all. He was too busy to be bothered. He said, send him to his mother. The mother said, I got to go to the prophet. Bishop, the, the, the daddy said, but it's not the new moon. In other words, it's not first Sunday. It's not Easter. It's not Christmas. Well, I can't, I can't take off work to go deal with your promise and your problem. Is it well with your husband? She said, it's well with him too. I believe, beloved, I believe, let me come out of this. I believe that when the woman of God says, I'm skipping over the last section of the text because I want to get out of here. I believe, and you all go back and read it. The prophet goes to the house. He tells Gehazi to lay a staff in the bed with the baby, the boy. He doesn't come to life. The Bible says, the Bible says that he lays on top of the boy, hand to hand, mouth to mouth face to face breathes on the boy watch this here is a secret to answered prayer the boy doesn't come alive at the first time he gets up and he starts praying and walking he goes back and tries it again <sighs> that was good for prayer he does it again the boy says the bible says he sneezes seven times come on what's the number seven the number y'all got it and then the Bible says that the boy comes back to life. The prophet hands him to his mother. I believe in my clothes. I believe that when the woman of God says that it was well, when everything in her life had fallen apart, when nothing was going as planned, I believe that her confession of it is well was a confession of her faith. The same God that gave this to me is the same God that can bring it back to life. So I'm not going to confess what I see. I'm going to confess what he said. So if you ask me, is it well with you? Is it well with your children? Is it well with your husband? I'm looking for somebody that can lift up your hands and say, all is well. I'm looking for somebody that can say, all is well. Come on, stand on your feet. I want to talk to a few people. Pastor Morrison, I heard this word. I found myself in this word. I've not really been honest with God. I've not been honest with the church. Yes, I'm saved. But I'm smiling better than I'm feeling. I want you to just meet me down at the altar. Come, come, come. I'm smiling. I'm smiling better than I'm feeling. I'm, 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 I'm dancing better than I'm feeling. I want to talk to some people this morning. Pastor Morrison, I'm tired of pretending. I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of of smiling I'm tired of smiling on the outside but crying on the inside and what's really getting on my nerves Bishop is nobody in my circle is picking me up in the spirit y'all scoot up there's some more people that's coming I want you to come the person that's still in your seat and you said Pastor Morrison what I can't understand is why I got so many spiritual people around me but can't nobody recognize the pain that I'm going through I want you to come 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 I know I'm preaching I, I know I'm prophesying but but I'm preaching and prophesying and when I got to go back home I'm going home to hell I need somebody to pick me up in the spirit I'm saying that it's well but it, it's not well but this morning I'm coming to the altar because I'm ready to give an honest answer come 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 we're gonna get free today we're getting free today 
God's going to free you. Strength is coming to you, baby. You're stronger than you think you are. It's not going to take you out. It's not going to take you out. Hey, ya na na. Come on. Yes, I see you. Some more of you are coming. First lady, where first lady go? I thought I was talking to first lady. Where, first lady before my mama died. I was having a conversation with my mama. I said, Ma, I said, I'm just tired. I said, I'm tired. I'm just, I've been going and going and I'm not seeing no fruit. Can I just be honest? Where are the people at? I'm giving and sowing and I'm sowing and I'm giving and I'm helping and I'm, I'm showing up and I'm, I'm preaching and prophesying, but, but I'm not seeing it for myself. I'm tired. I need some people that's going to be honest today. I'm, I'm, I'm tired I'm tired of praying for other people to get a house and they get a house and I'm still in my apartment I'm tired I'm tired of praying for people to get a breakthrough but I'm still going around and around in circles I'm tired my mama said something to me Bishop my mama said she said Z <laughs> she said you probably fainted a long time ago but you just kept on going that's what's happening to many of us we fainted a long time ago but we still showing up our souls fainted a long time ago but we have no choice we can't quit too many people depend on us y'all not saying nothing we come to be honest today so many people depend on us so I can't quit but I'm tired this morning God is breathing new strength on you lift up your hands up 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 come on matter of fact close your eyes everybody those of you that didn't come to the front it's all right close your eyes bow your head start talking to God tell him all about it tell him that you're tired Tell him how tired you are. Some of you need to, it's all right, get on your knees. I see you wanting to get down on your knees. It's all right. Tell him how tired you are. Tell God how disappointed you are. Be honest with God. I, I don't like the way that felt. I, I don't like the way I'm living. I, I don't like, why is it that I'm still here? Give God an honest answer this morning. so strength is coming to you. Hey, God, I'm Come on, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Shaka da Bahaya, strength, Lord. Strength, give us strength today. God has given you strength today. Oh, strength, supernatural strength. Hey, he's giving you new strength, baby. He's giving you fresh strength. Fresh strength. You're not, have, you're not going to have to go off of your old strength. God's giving you fresh strength. You don't need to go off of your old strength. Your old strength won't work in your new season. Some of you getting your fight back. Some of you are getting your vitality back. Somebody say, I need it back, Lord. I need it back, Lord. I need my strength back. I need it back. It's all right, baby. It's all right. God sees you. God sees and he knows. Do it for the Lord. Put her tears in her bottle. Let this day be a day of remembrance for her. God turned it around. Today. Hey. New strength, Lord. New strength. Lift up your hands, baby. I know. I know. I know. Stand behind her for me. Lift her hands up. Lift them up. Isha. Yadaba. I break it off of you. I break it off your mind. I come against the spirit of depression. Spirit of low self-esteem. Those who mishandled you. Those who dropped you that should have carried you. Those who, who should have protected you. Who violated you. Break. I break it. I break it. Break, 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 break. Somebody shall break, shall break. Let us saw ya. 
Oh, do it in her God. Put it down in the belly, God. Put it down in the belly, God. That's God. He's giving you new strength, baby. It's been hard for you, but it's gonna get better. Hear me when I say it's been hard for you, but it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. It's gonna get better in Jesus' name. You tired too, baby? Lift up your hands. Tell the Lord I'm tired. Tell him, go ahead. Tell him, I'm tired, Lord. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of all of it. I need you to come see about me. The Lord told me to tell you, baby, that he sees you. The Lord says, tell her, I see her. Oh, shiny Oh, he sees you. They overlooked you, but he sees you. They overlooked you, but God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. He sees you. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. This ain't no churchy turn around, girl. Turn around like God. I need a turn around. I need you to turn this thing. I need you to turn it. Oh, yeah, da 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 God said he gon' turn it around for you. He gon' turn it around for you. Why is it happening for everybody else, but it's not happening for me? God said he gon' turn it. He gon' turn it by this time next year. I hear the Lord say, Oh, Shani, Come on, y'all, praise him. Come on, start clapping your hands and praising him. Hey, the Lord said, leave it here. Leave it here at the altar. Don't take it back home with you. Don't take it back home with you. He said, leave it right here. He said, don't pick it up again. He said, I'm taking care of it. Oh, child. God said, some people need strength to hold on. But you need the strength to let go. He said, let it go and leave it here at the altar. Come on, Zion, and clap your hands. Come on, clap, clap, clap. Come on, start clapping your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Oh. Overwhelm her with love. Overwhelm her with favor. God said he's about to overwhelm you. Hey, 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 hey. He said you've been overwhelmed in a bad way. But he's about to overwhelm you in a good way. Hey, hey. He said your goodness. Hey, goodness is about to overtake you because you serve well. Oh! pay you for what God gonna do for you. Can't nobody pay you. It ain't enough money, baby. Oh, shiny old sire. Give us so you the little old sire. I seal it. I seal it. I seal it. I secure this word. Wealth and riches belong to you. Let us go. Come on, give me praise. Don't get tired, Zion. Don't get tired. Clap, clap, clap. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the miracle. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the turnaround. Lord, we thank you. Yeah. Can I pray with you? Can I pray with you? Lift up your hands. There's some things that has attached itself to you, that has attached itself to you from your past. And you've got ahead of it, but it keeps trying to come after you. 
is trying to attach itself to you. You're a powerful woman of God. You're powerful. That's why the devil fights you the way he fights you. <laughs> That's why you go through so much. But God said today he's going to sever it. He's going to sever it off of you. Come on, lift up your hands. There's about to be a cut in the realm of the spirit. Come on, Zion, don't get tired. Come on, Zion, don't get... I need some intercessors to start praying. Come on, stop praying. When I lay my hands on you, hey, everything that's tried to attach itself to you has got to lose you and let you go. I hear the Lord say, never again. Open your mouth and say, never again. Open your mouth and say, never again. Somebody open up your mouth and say, never again. Oh, Shandy, oh, catch up, catch up, catch up. Never again will the enemy fight you like that. Never again will you lose victory. Never again.
Somebody die today and go to a devil's hell, then everything that we've done has just been in vain. I need to make sure that we are saved house today. Ask somebody else, say, are you saved? And if they don't say yes, we got time, bring them down to the altar. Because this is what it's all about. My question to you before I turn over this mic is this. Are you 100% sure if you died today that you would make heaven your home? said are you 100% sure if you died today you would make heaven your home if you are not 100% sure we've got time for you come 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 on let's thank God for a saved house this morning clap your hands for a saved house come on we got to go I want you to grab I want you to grab a never again seat Bishop didn't ask me to do this, but whenever God blesses us like this, we got to sow. And then they show for ya. God can bring me down. I want us to give this morning. I want us to give in three ways. And those of you that are watching online, I want you to give. I want to give in three different levels. There's three levels we're going to give. We're going to give 30, 60, and 90. We're going to give a $30 seed, a $60 seed, or a $90 seed. There's 10 of you that's going to sow that $90 seed this morning. You say, Pastor Morrison, this word was for me, and I'm sowing my never again seed. Never again am I going to doubt God. Never again am I going to question God. Where are you? Where are you? Where are my 10 that's sowing that 90? Come, come up here so I can see you. God said there's 10 of us that's sowing that never again seed. Hey. There's some more of you that's coming. This is my never again seed. Never again will I be broke. Never again will I let the enemy run havoc in my life. Never again. Somebody say never again. I got time for you. How many is that, Sybil? Count. How many is that? How many is that? That's in line. There's some more of you, there's some more that's coming. Come on, there's some more of you that said, Pastor Morrison, I'm sowing my never again seed. This is my never again seed. I think we got over our 10, that's, we're on the overflow. There's 15 with that never again seed. I want everybody else to say, Pastor Morrison, watch this, listen to me. Listen to me. We don't ever say we broke. We just say we in between blessings. Say I'm in between blessings right now. I don't be talking about I'm broke. Just say I'm in between. Pastor Morrison, I'm in between blessings. I don't have the 90, but I got the 30. I got the 60. Stand on your feet quickly. Come on. I do have the 30. I got the 30. I got the 60. Stand on your feet. Hey. I love this church. It feel a whole lot different in here on, on Sunday morning. <laughs> Feel a whole lot different in here on Sunday morning. <laughs> Minister crack it up. <laughs> Pastor Morrison, I don't have the 30, I don't have the 60, I but I'm gonna get in on this. I'm gonna get in on this. Let me tell you something. I had a, 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 a partner. I called for an $80 seat. She said, Pastor Morrison, I didn't have $80. She said I was ashamed. She said I knew if I sold more than $8, it was gonna overdraw my account. I had said that God was unlocking some money. I'm not a money preacher, so just hold, just get yourself together. I'm just telling you my story. Cause you know how to say it. Y'all know how to say it. The woman told me she sold an eight dollar seed. I said God is unlocking some stuff, some things that's been unlocked. If you sow in faith, God's gonna unlock it. <laughs> baby, somebody said baby. That girl sold an eight dollar seed. The next day, God supernaturally unlocked $10,000 of back child support. 
Why? Because it's not the amount, it's the faith. You got to have a faith. Somebody say, I got the faith for it. If you're sitting next to somebody and you say they don't have nothing to give, tell them, if you got something, say, stand up, I'll give something for you. We all going to give. Come on, stand on, everybody stand on your feet. And just come on, those, I want everybody to touch the basket. This new church, I, I like the electronic, but at offer time, I like the walk. So come and touch the basket and say, never again with your phone. Don't lie before God. Don't say you give it and you don't give. You'll bring a curse to your whole house. Touch the basket and say never again. Touch the basket and say never again.
we appreciate you, God, for not only did you encourage us to know that increase is coming to our houses, but you've encouraged us to know all we have to do is be honest. We leave here today, God, with great anticipation of not what you've done so far. While we're thankful, we are grateful for what's going to happen after we benefit. There's a blessing after the benediction. And for that, we give you praise, we give you glory. And we give you honor. Now, God, we leave this place, but never leave your own to keep us, and we shall be kept. Protect us, and we shall be protected. And God, would you watch us as we go to and fro? Keep us from this snare of the enemy. I bind every accident, incident, car malfunction. Take us to our destination safely. Yes, no carjacking, no murder, no rape. Protect these, your people. Now I'm linking arms with my brother and my sister to show unity in the house, unity in the spirit, unity for the prophecy that has been prophesied. Oh God, we're standing on the arm. I'm praying for my brother. I'm praying for my sister that release is coming to their house. Increase is coming to their house. Increase is coming to their life. And for this we say thank you. And we give you praise. Devil, you should have got us a long time ago. But we're leaving here today with great expectation that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into our hearts the things that God has already prepared for us. In Jesus' name. And go in peace. Tell somebody I love you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.